Hello there, Jeff from Small Arms Research. Thanks for tuning in. This may be one of the most important videos that you've ever watched. That is, if you're interested in owning a machine gun. When this video is done, you are going to know how you can own one of these. This video isn't about me shooting machine guns. Today, it's about you shooting machine guns. Stick around, you're gonna like this. Like we said in the intro, today it's not about me shooting machine guns. Today it's about you shooting machine guns. Today we're gonna answer some questions. Uh, we're gonna have a little Q&A session and uh, uh, maybe we could call this one everything you always wanted to know about owning a machine gun, uh, but we're afraid to ask. Who knows, we'll have to see when we do the editing. But stick around, I hope you'll uh, gain something from this. I'm on my way to the range and uh, we're gonna film this video for you. And when I show up, there's all my friends. Well, just one. He's a handsome fella, and he's the one that's going to be asking the questions today. I'll be doing my best to give the answers. You can't own a machine gun unless you have a special license, can you? Well, that's a good question. And it's a common misconception. There is no special license necessary to own a machine gun. I'll say that one more time because that's a very common misconception. There is no special license necessary to own a machine gun. And again, we're talking federal law. The part that is often misconstrued as a license is an ATF Form 4. Uh, an easy way to look at this is it is a title, and it is a title application, and that's what it is. When a manufacturer makes an NFA firearm, and you can substitute sound suppressor, destructive device, short barreled shotgun, short barreled rifle, AOW uh, machine gun, you can insert whatever it is you're interested in here. Today we're talking about NFA firearms. When they manufacture one, uh, they add the information to the registry. And when you, as an individual, want to purchase one, you have to have the title transferred to you. The title in this case is an ATF Form 4, and it consists of uh, a two-page document uh, filled out by you, filled out by the dealer you're purchasing it from, and signed by the CLEO, the Chief Law Enforcement Officer in your area. What he is signing is saying, uh, he's making a statement that you're not breaking any known uh, state or local laws by owning this firearm. Along with it, you submit two sets of fingerprints. Some dealers will have you do three. I used to, used to do three uh, just to play it safe in case it was smudged. Along with your paperwork, you submit a passport photo for each of the copies. So you'll have two passport photos. You'll have two or three fingerprint cards. And you'll have this special form. And your dealer your class 3 dealer or whomever you're purchasing this firearm from is going to provide all this paperwork for you so you don't have to get online and find this stuff on your own and it's not hidden in a secret place the person you're getting the NFA firearm from will have all this paperwork all you do is fill it out have your Clio sign it affix your two passport photos send in your fingerprints and a check for two hundred dollars and when ATF makes sure that that firearm is in the registry and is a legal gun for you to own and the FBI runs your prints and makes sure that uh, you're not on the uh, most wanted list. They're going to marry the two together. They're going to make a new title with your name on it. And then it belongs to you. Now this license or uh, title or whatever you called it, um, you have to do that every year, right? No. This is a one-time, one-shot, once-in-your-life deal. You're purchasing one firearm. It has one title. And only one time you have to transfer it to you. You never have to renew it. Uh, you know there's no upkeep, it's just a simple title transfer. Just like when you purchase your vehicle, you send in one title application, and if you sell it, you fill out a title application to transfer it to someone else. Well, if I get that title, and I own this machine gun, I mean like ATF could just come into my house at 2 in the morning, kick the doors in, and demand to see it, right? No, that's not right. I have never ever heard in my life of a single case where ATF has kicked anyone's doors in 
just to see a firearm that they legally own. Um, you're not signing over your Fourth Amendment rights. Um, you're still a free citizen of the United States. You simply own an NFA firearm. A firearm is a firearm. Cool. So I can buy a machine gun, but you can't like shoot it anywhere, right? You need like a special place or something? Well, no. Yes and no. You need a place that's safe. A gun is a gun. And you have to have a safe backstop and a safe impact area, regardless of what it is that you're shooting. As far as law is concerned, a gun is a gun. As far as your local club might be concerned, you want to check into the rules. But legally, no. Gun is a gun. Cool. Never knew that I could own a machine gun before. I always heard you needed a special license. That's awesome. Now, how come they're $15,000 for an M16 when I see dealers can buy them for a thousand? You trying to screw me? Nope. Nobody's trying to screw anybody. And this is where it gets a little bit complicated. On May 19th of 1986, Congress deemed in all of its wisdom under the Hughes Amendment of the Firearm Owners Protection Act that the manufacture of machine guns for individual ownership would cease. May 19th, that's the cutoff date. That's the last day that a machine gun was manufactured that could legally be owned by an individual. Now, knowing the rules of supply and demand, that's been a long time since a machine gun has been manufactured an individual can own. And there's a lot of new gunners that have come through the ranks since then. It's economics. Well, I know this guy that owns a machine gun, and I'd like to buy it from him. He has to sell that to a dealer so he can sell it to me, right? Nope, that's not the case at all. An individual can transfer a machine gun to another individual that lives in the same state. The only time you're going to have to get another dealer involved is if you're transferring that firearm to an individual that lives in another state. So what you're telling us is we can buy a machine gun, we don't need a special license, it's okay to shoot it, and we can sell it to somebody else when we don't want it anymore by doing another one of these title transfers or Form 4s? That's the ticket. Exactly. You can own a machine gun, you don't need a license, you can shoot it, you can sell it to another individual as long as they can pass the background check to have the Form 4 approved. Now getting into these this Form 4 and the background checks and the paperwork, the rule of thumb that I was told that seems to have held true is if you can legally own a handgun, you can legally own a machine gun. Well thanks for tuning in today. We certainly hope that you take something away from this video and that we've helped to dispel some of the many, many, many myths and rumors about machine gun ownership out there. Uh, maybe the next time I turn on YouTube, I'll see some of you with your machine guns. And uh, I hope that you enjoyed my handsome assistant. Maybe some uh, likes, uh, I don't know, up here or up here, wherever it is, and shares and subscribes and all that stuff would be cool. Show him a little bit of love. He's camera shy. And uh, we're glad that you stopped by. Anyway. Have fun and be safe.